Hi, it's Steve from Parts Select. In this video, we'll show you our attempt at trying to repair a vacuum cleaner. Normally, an appliance like this would typically end up going to the repair shop or being thrown away as being potentially a too expensive repair to do. We thought we've got nothing to lose but trying it ourselves, so we'll show you some of our troubleshooting techniques to see if we can diagnose what the problem is with this. Now, we're told that this is a brand new unit and never worked from the start. So chances are there's probably something quite simple wrong with it. We've done a quick visual inspection. We don't see any obvious damage. And we have looked at it closely and determined that it has never run. There's no sign of any dirt. So again, there's a pretty good chance that it's a simple repair. The first thing we'll do is verify that the symptom actually exists. So we're simply going to plug it in and see if it actually turns on or not. All right, now that we've plugged the unit in, we'll depress the start switch and it does not appear to work. Now next we're just going to check to see if we can hear an actual switch turning on and off mechanically. You may or may not be able to hear that but we're just going to listen very carefully. And It does appear like there is a mechanical action happening in there so we're pretty sure that the button is attached to the switch. Now next, we're going to use a proximity voltage tester just to see if we do have power coming through this cord. We have looked at the cord and it appears to be physically okay, but we'll want to make sure that it is actually conducting electricity. Now a proximity voltage tester is a handy little tool for checking things like that. You can typically find them at most hardware stores and how they work is they don't need to actually come in contact with a wire, they just need to be in close proximity to it. This particular one will blink when it detects a live voltage and this typically will only work on AC voltage which is your normal household current. So we do show that we have live voltage going into our unit which tells me that the end of the cord is fine at least on the live side of the wire. There's also a neutral side that we can't test with this. Next I'll check in around the area of that switch and I don't have any voltage there. That may or may not be a clue as to what's going on here, but it doesn't appear like there's power getting up near that switch. So I think we need to go an extra step and try to disassemble this and see what we can find inside. First of all, we'll get the filter assembly off and out of the way. Now, with that out of the way, we do see some screws down through the top here. We've looked at it fairly close and we see that there is a seam all the way around so it appears to be two major parts to it, both a top and a bottom that need to be separated. So we'll go ahead and remove those screws. There are two more holes in the center here. So we've located a couple of screws at the front, a couple in the center. We're going to assume that there may be one or two more towards the back here. And pulling that cord aside, we do see a hole down in there. Now we've identified five screws here, but we want to think that there's possibly one more over in this side. So we're going to begin by just feeling around that label. There's a possibility that they've put the label over the opening for the screw. So we'll just feel around that. We don't feel any indentations. No, it doesn't appear to be anything there. But we also have a filter at the back of this unit with a cover over it, so we're going to remove that just in case there's something hiding in there. And a filter. There doesn't appear to be anything here, so now we'll look at the bottom. Now there are some pockets here. Let's have a look. No screw heads in there. Again, we think there's got to be a screw somewhere on this side of the vacuum. So let's see if we can pop this cap for the switch out of there. So we'll use our putty knife and our flat blade. We got one side out. And looky here, there's a screw down in there. That might be what's holding this together. So let's just keep our fingers crossed. But this might be the missing link. So we'll go back to try to separate that again. We've loosened the front up. We'll go to the back. 
And that popped out easily. So let's get a little upward pressure on this. Oh, that's feeling better. So just carefully lift that top off. Now it appears that those wires to the switch are on nice and tight. Now we can take those off and do a continuity check, but we didn't think we were getting power over this far. So let's just see where they go. These would be the two wires that come from the cord. Well, we can't really see what's going on with those two wires, but there is a release button on this side. It looks like that assembly will come out of there. Well, there's one of our power wires and it's detached, so it must connect to something here. Uh, yes, there's a terminal right there. And these would be the two wires that supply the line and neutral from our cord to our controls. And it appears like this one was dislodged. So let's see if we can reattach that. And it's got a locking tab on it, so it's locked on in place. Now let's see if we can drop that back into place. Now we're going to be cautiously optimistic that that may have been the problem. Obviously it was not allowing power to the controls. Whether that's our only problem or not, we don't know. So we're going to very carefully plug this unit in, keeping in mind that we have exposed electrical circuits here, so you'll want to use some caution. So now, moment of truth. Wow! Now that we've verified that this vacuum cleaner works perfectly, we're going to go ahead and put it back together. Well, as you see, we were able to repair this appliance for no cost and saved it from going into the landfill. Just a good example of what you can do at home with a little bit of ingenuity and a few tools. And good luck on your next repair. Thank you for checking out this video. For more repair and cleaning advice, be sure to check out our YouTube channel and subscribe so you're always up to date.